Peace is the last ditch argument of the Euro enthusiast. Faced with almost any criticism, he'll say, ah, oh, yeah, but you know, it's got to be better than shooting at each other on the Western Front. The EU might be undemocratic, it might be corrupt, it might be expensive, it might be wasteful, it might swat aside national referendum results when they go the wrong way, but surely, he'll say, surely it's better than those lines of crosses in the Flemish war graves. Well, of course, if you put it in those terms, it's hard to argue, isn't it? Right? And indeed, that's why they do put it in those terms. Uh, I remember the former president of the European Commission, uh, Mr. Van Rompuy, saying nationalism and Euroscepticism lead to egoism and to the trenches. Uh, I remember Angela Merkel, when she was trying to get money out of the Bundestag to cover the Greek bailouts, saying this is a question of war and peace in the 21st century. But is it? I wonder whether we're begging the question there. Ask yourself this. Is the European Union best understood as a cause of European peace? Or doesn't it make more sense to think of it as a consequence of a European peace that was based on the defeat of fascism, the spread of democracy, and the stability of the NATO alliance? All right, it's difficult to uh, answer that, it being a necessarily hypothetical question, but let's broaden it out. Uh, ask the question in wider terms. Does jamming different peoples together into the same state generally make them get on better or worse? Look around the world at the conflict spots today in Chechnya, in Kashmir, in South Sudan, in parts of the Balkans. Look at how many wars are caused by people being as it were, enrolled into the wrong state. We've had plenty of supranational entities in Europe, but they have been police states. The Ottoman Empire, the Habsburgs, the Romanovs. As soon as people get the chance to vote democratically, they tend to opt for peaceable separation. Or if that all seems too abstract, just ask yourself this one very narrow question. Look at the impact of the most recent lurch towards closer European integration, namely the single currency. Look at the way German newspapers are now writing about Greece and Greek newspapers are now writing about Germany. Would you say that that process is making the peoples of Europe get on better or worse? What's the real cause of peace in Europe? Well. I think to answer that, you could uh, do a lot worse than the phrase famously attributed to the great 19th century French economist Frédéric Bastiat, who said, when goods can't cross frontiers, armies will. Free trade correlates incredibly closely with the end of war and the spread of tranquility globally. But that, I think, is a subject for a future ici Londres.